And what's up, what's up? Welcome in GC Live. It is a Wednesday episode. I had to think about it for a second. I think it's a Wednesday. It has been, Chris, what I would have to say is nothing less than a whirlwind of a week so far. It's only Wednesday afternoon. Glad to be back with everybody. Shout out to everybody in our chat. Shout out to everybody um, listening on the podcast after the fact. And as you can tell, we've sort of, we've, I would say going back and forth at exactly how we were going to time the show, how many shows we we're going to do in the off season. It really hasn't been a real off season yet, to be honest with you. It's been nonstop, but we've sort of at this point, it feels like we've settled on to um, sort of doing about three shows a week during the off season, maybe. And then we're, we're working through some things on timing and exact days and stuff like that. But this is where we are. Shout out to the GC live chat and shout out to our newest sponsor, and actually newest presenting sponsor, Chris, I'm very excited. I'm, we're still actually working on upgrading some graphics in the opening, but got to give a shout out to my buddy, Clint Hammond, someone that um, has been a, a good friend of mine for some time and uh, also um, has, uh, has been someone that supported Gamecock Central in the past. I've tried to in turn support Clint and he's done an outstanding job with mortgages for me and my friends. So, um, if you're in the market for a home, 803-771-6933, it's actually a great time to buy a house. Interest rates are, I think, literally as low as they about have ever been. So give Clint a call. He is the, uh, the main manager there at Mortgage Network here in Columbia and just does a fantastic job. And we will be continuing to tell you more about Clint, um, obviously in the coming days, weeks, and months. So Dude, very excited, Chris, to have Clint on board and uh, to be working with him officially again. Yeah, no doubt, man. And I've been able to uh, have lunch with you and Clint one time, and he definitely knows what he's doing. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And I've uh, heard a lot about him from other people I know in sort of the, the housing slash mortgage part of the industry. He does a fantastic job. So we're definitely appreciative of him. He uh, He's making the show run now, and we very much appreciate it and look forward to having him on for a long time to come. And Clint, also a huge Gamecock fan. So yep. uh, part, big, of, big Gamecock fan. Part, part of Clint's deal with us, I didn't tell you this part, Chris. Part of Clint's deal is that I promised if he wants to just hop on here and vent after a loss that he's allowed to come on the show on video and just vent. So wow. um, we're stuck with that. But I told him, hey, it's, it's a good trade-off. But um, no, nah, dude, really appreciate Clint. Um, really excited to have him on, as I said. And – Wanted to go ahead and mention him because I imagine we're going to have a lot of people watching and listening to the show today because, dude, I I actually, for once, I made notes because I was like, there's so many things since the show on Monday. We didn't do one yesterday. The show Monday afternoon. Dude, so Tracy Rocker departure, obviously, that's from today. Um, you add a, a D-line coaching search now, obviously, on top of, what was an ongoing O-line coaching search, which was sort of a continued storyline. Gunner Stockton decommitted. Uh, that was yesterday, I think. All the days are running together. Then you have the the introduction to Gamecock Nation of quarterback Jason Brown and wide receiver EJ Jenkins, who we are now tracking as people that South Carolina could be bringing on board as transfers. We'll get into them a little bit as far as the latest there. Torian Gray this actually feels like it was months ago. It was Monday night that Torian Gray was um, was hired by South Carolina. Long, long standing rumor, but they were able to actually bring on Torian Gray. And then um, a- another transfer we're keeping an eye on is uh, Jordan Strong. It looks like Strachan or Straycan or something. It's actually Jordan Strong is the absolute correct way to say it. Georgia State kid in the transfer portal. Listing, listed as an outside linebacker, Chris, but actually uh, led the nation in sacks. So it really is more of an edge rush type presence. Watched a little bit of his highlights. He's more of a defensive end type guy. But so, dude, there is no shortage, no shortage of things to talk about. Yeah, I mean <laughs> – I didn't even, when you started running through it, I was like, man, really, all that has happened since the last show. Uh, It's been so busy, the days have run together for me. So 
I didn't even remember the particular order or even which things happen when, but yeah, tons there obviously to get to. Where do we start? Do we go in reverse chronological order? Do we go in chronological order? Where do we go? Well, yeah. I, I I think we got to start with um, we got to start with Tracy Rocker um, and Chris. Yeah. I, I know you you can tell people about that. Um, and I I we're gonna reverse roles here. I got to take a quick phone call, but I'm gonna let Chris tell everybody about Tracy Rocker and uh, Chris. We also um, we got Doc Graybeard throwing throwing some cash money our way along with Jeffrey Hicklin. So so maybe in the meantime, I tell you what. While I take this call, why don't y'all post some of your questions? Um, that'll give Chris something to talk about. Um, oh, and Tyler, I knew, dude, I knew we were going to forget something. Byron Gerardo. That's right. Back home. How did we forget Big Byron? So yeah, we'll we'll talk about that as well. So um, Chris, I'm gonna I'm gonna return this phone call real quick, man, and then um, dude, hit it hit hit it all. I guess <laughs> I can be the showrunner, man. Yeah, no problem. You take your call. So, yeah, Jeffrey right here. Hey, appreciate the tip, Jeffrey, for sure. Um, all right, to address this, did Rocker leave in the middle of the night like Kiffin did Tennessee? Does this continue to show how toxic the previous staff was? So, um, all right, so on Rocker, um, I did some digging on that angle this morning when we were trying to run down, A, is he definitely gone? B, is he definitely gone to Auburn? We know now, yes, he's gone, and yes, he's gone to Auburn. But in checking on that, Rocker did not, I've confirmed, Rocker did not leave without telling anybody. It's not like he just completely no-showed and, and nobody had any clue what was going on. Were some people out of the loop? Some people were because my understanding is Rocker, just a fairly private person and everything. But the appropriate parties at South Carolina knew um, and had known had known for a few days that this was a possibility and then knew that he was going to be departing the staff. So uh, we've had a lot of people ask about that. Appreciate you asking about it, Jeffrey, because that is something that I definitely wanted to get to and clear up. Um, I'm not defending Rocker uh, or whatever, or whatever people think about his departure. That's totally fine. There's going to be a lot of different opinions on it. But the appropriate people knew that, uh, A, there was a chance that he could depart the staff and that, be that he was going to depart the staff. We we did know about that. And so obviously, um, speaking of the D-line coach opening, I have a little update for our subscribers on GamecockCentral.com. Um, on our front page, if you're a subscriber, you can click on it, see one of the names, a very prominent name that we've heard in the defensive line coaching search, a guy that uh, has some ties to Clayton White, the new defensive coordinator that could end up being the guy still tracking that even throughout the show. So. Uh, you guys see me looking at my phone or something like that. Also trying to track that story as well. Um, so I'm going to try to get as many of your questions as I can, guys. Appreciate you guys uh, sending in some super chat tips as well. Doc Graybeard, a frequent listener. Hey, thank you very much for your $5 tip and your support of the show. Is Beamer's lack of head coaching experience playing into this retention issue? <clears throat> it's getting quite concerning. Well, I think some of the uh, – so the situations have been a little bit different, I think. Um, you know, we, we, we talked about Rocker a second ago in terms of his departure there. And you got to remember, too, I don't think Tracy Rocker was just trying to get out, jumping anywhere. Uh, there have been some NFL interests we heard in the offseason as well. But Auburn, for him, is a different type of place, too. Uh, he won the Outland Trophy, the Lombardi Trophy. He was an All-American there and then went and played in the NFL. So he went to Auburn. He's coached there as well one of his stints in the SEC previously. So a lot of history with Auburn, a little bit of a different place. Uh, Mike Bobo, you know, did he think that the Auburn situation overall, a lot of different factors was better? Probably so. But one of the things that we reported there with, with Bobo, uh, after all that sort of went down is, you know, it was known that there was interest, mutual interest. Bobo was interested in Auburn. Auburn was interested in Bobo. And, uh, you know, what ended up happening after that is there was a lot of conversations internally about it and where everybody would landed was, hey, you know, go get get the job at Auburn. And, and everybody just sort of moved on from there. And so there, there was it wasn't a financial thing and that Bobo was just trying to grab money. It wasn't that South Carolina was saying, 
no, absolutely not. Uh, we're not going to pay anymore. It wasn't this leverage play for money. Um, were there some discussions about money? Yes, because South Carolina could have, would have been in a position to come back with more money if that's what it came down to, but it really didn't. That, that just wasn't really a driver in the decision. So, uh, look, where it is now, Beamer had originally retained four coaches from the staff, and now it's down to two. And so uh, Mike Peterson and Des Kitchings still on board. I saw earlier someone made mention of Des Kitchings and his need, and I'm sorry I can't give proper credit. Thanks again, Doc, for that tip and that question. Trying to go back. Somebody mentioned uh, Des Kitchings, a raise. Um, yeah, Justin Simmons. Can we please give Kitchings a new contract and a significant raise for being loyal and good at his job? Actually, Justin, we've already reported. Uh, we do hear that Des is in line to get a raise. Uh, they had the assistants who were still on board, um, and then the new coaches all had contracts approved, or most of them had contracts approved uh, a little over a week ago now approaching two weeks probably at this point. And um, Kitchings was one of those. But he's, from what we hear, going to get a pay bump. And you're exactly right. He's done a fantastic job uh, holding things together on the coaching staff uh, in terms of recruiting. He's been really vital during that transition from Will Muschamp to Shane Beamer, talking to kids, get helping get through signing day, helping in the transfer portal, just a lot of navigation on those types of things. He's really done a tremendous job. Uh, Blake Dickey, another super chat. Wes coming right back in in time for another super chat from Blake Dickey. Top five transfers to watch out for. We were actually talking about this earlier, Wes, on the transfers, and I'm trying to keep talking about them. One of them is the guy that you mentioned, Jordan Strong from Georgia State. Yes. Um uh, the uh, edge rusher, E.J. Jenkins, wide receiver, uh, Jason Brown, quarterback, both from St. Francis. Uh, those are two guys to watch. Uh, who else we got, Wes? You have your handy dandy list there. Um, trying to th those are probably the main ones right now. Obviously, you look um, the potential of maybe a Jakeem Green uh, with somebody. We were tracking, I, and it, that's sort of gone a little bit quiet since the offer. Um, it has. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jakeem Green, uh, for a little background, he is the Nebraska transfer originally from Sumter. At one time, a Gamecock commitment, actually, under Will Muschamp. So that's another one to watch. I'm trying to just run through linebacker, defensive back. Um, those are the main guys I can think of. So that's only four. Blake, I don't know if you need a refund on like a dollar. I don't know if it's a dollar per transfer on your tip there. But um, those are the main ones we did. I will mention another one, so I can give you five. You know, one that we th – there are a couple more that we were tracking. We checked on Charleston Rambo, the receiver from Oklahoma, Grant Calcaterra, the tight end transfer from Oklahoma. I don't really know that either of those are going to happen. Um, you you got to look. And South Carolina's got so many needs – in the transfer portal, high school and junior college recruiting. They're still recruiting some JUCO guys. They're still recruiting high school guys, and they still need portal help. I'm not saying tight end is not a need, but there are other positions that are probably a little bit more of a need. Charleston Rambo, I just haven't heard of much traction there. Um, you know, we well, did, he, He's committed to Miami now. So. Committed to Miami, that's right. Yep, Charleston yeah. Rambo committed to Miami. Yep, I actually forgot about that. So, yeah, that was nice one of the them. <laughs> That's yeah, really good for them. Good player. And so, uh, yeah, sorry, that one totally slipped my mind. So, yeah, Rambo to Miami. Um, those are probably the main guys, man. I mean, there, there could be some other ones pop up, but those are the ones that come to mind along the way. Yeah, let, let's talk. Um, and I see, do we have any super chats before Greg's or is this the most? Uh, well, okay, all, all these will sort of go together. Did you hit on bleak mode? Nope. Bleak mode is one that we definitely need to hit. And then Greg S. We got a double Greg sighting. Greg Lee, yep. Uh, let's hit bleak because it is tied in to what we're talking about. And in the meantime, I'm also going to put some Jason Brown tape up here. Oh, yeah. So I can get it pulled. Y'all just hang tight with me for one second. Uh, let's see. 
Did that work, Chris? We up? We rolling? Uh, yep. There we go. Um, this and, and I well, I answer your question first, Bleak. So if um, if South Carolina offers him, which you know, talking to the kid yesterday, he felt like an offer was you know was maybe was hopefully coming. So uh, you know they were they were going to go through the transcripts. They were going to look through all those things. For both uh, for both him and his teammate EJ Jenkins, and uh, two kids that, that obviously you know there's going to be a step up anytime you go from FCS level to the SEC. There's going to be a transition, but um, there's some talent here too. I mean, the kid's got a big arm. He's a big kid. Um, stands in the pocket. Uh, you know, can move around a little bit. And I, um, you know, ha- has some touch on the ball. You see it there. And then Jenkins is freaking six foot eight. Uh, playing wide receiver, which is crazy. These are high school teammates as well, I believe. And, Chris, I, I think if South Carolina officially offers them, then there there's a pretty good chance they, they end up with the Gamecocks. Now, there are other schools that are coming in as well. There are other schools that um, could offer and, and maybe potentially slow this thing down. But But the thing is, both are trying to go ahead and enroll, obviously. So there really is no chance for this thing to, to take a couple of weeks and, and really blow up. If they're going to be at South Carolina, it's going to have to sort of be by, by the weekend, basically. So uh, that, that actually, if South Carolina decides that that's what they want to do, that they want them, that, that could work into their favor. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And, um, you know, the clock's sort of ticking. And then for South Carolina, look, man, I mentioned this earlier, you know, they have a lot of needs and they have to really be careful to make sure on, on every guy they're involved with a lot of guys. When you look at portal guys and then you think about, okay, could some more guys go in the portal at some point, maybe even like after spring ball, you know, you have to think about that. Do, do you want to hold two or three spots and sort of see what happens? Then you got high school guys and you got junior college guys like Joko Willis and Bam Scott you know, at, at linebacker, another big position you need. you got big needs at defensive back. But you also need receivers, and you need a quarterback. You know, they're in a position now where you got two scholarship quarterbacks. One's going to be a true freshman, Colton Gothier. Um, and so that's something that can be a little concerning when you when you start looking at your depth. And so these two guys make sense. For South Carolina, you got to make sure everything's in order, and you got to – realize that hey these guys are taking two spots so you do have to be sure but I think there's a there's a good bit to like about both you know you got a a really big wide receiver with ball skills who certainly at this level has a little bit of a you know this level he's sort of man among boys you know he's it's going to be a big step up in competition obviously but I think physically there's a lot to like him when you look at Jason Brown there's a lot of tools you know Um, is he a finished product no but it, this is a guy that you feel like has the arm talent to where if he needed to come help you, uh, he, he could probably help you. He's got sort of an unorthodox motion, but he also, you know, has good arm talent. Yeah, very very unorthodox motion. But, I mean, if you can get the football there, I, Chris, I think we've seen more and more coaches being willing to not quite be so tied into the mechanics of something. You yeah. know, if if the guy can accurately deliver the football. Now, if it affects the consistency of your accuracy, that's that's one thing. But if a guy can deliver the football, you really – you don't want to mess with that stuff too much. You know, so um, I don't know. It's always sort of a – you're going to maybe tinker with some things, but you don't want to just completely mess up a guy – because you're so concerned about mechanics that, um, you know, you do more harm than you do good. All right, let's hit a couple more of these. Uh, Greg S. wanting to know thoughts on cleaning house um, outside of uh, Des Kitchings and Mike Peterson and how that is really part of the true much-needed culture change. I mean, you know, I I think, Chris, to to try and answer this question, I even go back – you remember you mentioned this on Monday, and you said that that Beamer m- mentioned how he'd made a couple of mistakes. You know, there, there's he said maybe there's been a couple of mistakes along the way. First of all, 
incredibly refre- refreshing to hear that. Yeah. To hear a coach actually just say, you know what? Made made some mistakes along the way. There, um, you know, and there there was a question on here earlier from a super chat about, you know, is he in over his head? Um, I, I don't I don't think Shane Beamer is in over his head. I think anytime you start a new job, there are going to be some growing pains at the beginning. There's gonna be there's gonna be a learning experience, if I if I will. And that's what that's with anything. But uh, for one, we, we know that that Beamer has attacked this job with passion. Um, he's had a little bit more, um, how do you say, a little bit more vinegar than I even suspected. You know, like he's been he's been fired up in these press conferences. And, you know, I, when he says there, there were some mistakes made, it does he, – he didn't specify, but it, it does make you wonder, you know, what exactly he was referring to. And mm-hmm. – but we can all read between lines about that. So I, I do think uh, if you tie what I'm saying into what Greg is saying, and then the fact of you know Beamer saying we want coaches who want to be here, we want coaches that have answers as opposed to worries. Don't just point out the problems. Try to find solutions to the problems. And it was a great point from Beamer. Of course, there are problems at South Carolina. This is a two and eight football team last year, and there was a coaching change. You don't make coaching changes if you're eight and two, you know. So it, it's kind of a situation where, yes, there have been problems, and yes, um, if Tracy Rocker wants to go to Auburn, then so be it. If Mike Bobo wants to go to Auburn, I, I think then so be it. You're better off in the long run with guys that want to be a part of your program, I think. And uh, we'll tie this in to Greg Lee, a um, buddy of mine who said, uh, Danos is on me. Um, why, does it not, why does it not matter in the grand scheme that Rocker is gone? And why does it matter that he is gone? Um, I guess sort of both sides of the coin, but lack of loyalty in Greg's opinion would have hurt long-term. He has never stayed anywhere. And, and that is true. He has never really been a guy that stayed anywhere for long. And I think if you're, if you're Beamer, you know, Chris Rocker does have a, have a good reputation. Like he's coached a lot of guys in the sec. He's put, he's put kids in the league. Nobody's going to downplay or shortchange that. But also I think it's very, very possible, if not likely that South Carolina can almost certainly go hire somebody that wants to be at South Carolina more, that's more excited to be here, and is going to be more willing to go out and put the time and energy needed on the recruiting trail as well. So now the, the key will be can they find someone who's also a technician, you know, and because Rocker, I mean, the guy can coach DL. There's, there's no doubt about that. We're not going to just shortchange the guy because he just left South Carolina. But – can you go find somebody that's a better fit and maybe wants to be here more and is going to recruit harder? Absolutely. I think the key will be also to find somebody that, that can develop them when they get them. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of things to consider, you know, um, staff continuity, how the staff works together, you know, the, the, the overall vibe in the building. And, and, and that's something I'll say, Wes, like, I think it's very interesting to think about it. You know, you and I, we spend all day trying to, get a get number one information right to pass on to our great audience and our readers our subscribers on Gamecock Central and present facts but we also along the way we just talk to a lot of people about sort of the state of affairs and externally and internally like it's really different right now like how things are perceived <clears throat> there's not panic in the football office right now you know with, with what's going on with rocker leaving or Boba, like there's not any panic um Coaches have been meeting with players. Like, I've heard a lot of positives about all that stuff. And now, does that mean they'll win a bunch of games in the future? Uh, no idea. No idea. But there's not any panic. There's not any woe is me. There's just none of that pervading. It's been, it's actually been a lot of positives in, internally, which is good. I mean, that's what our readers here, our listeners are talking about is bringing in, injecting positive energy, how that's a need. And I think that is important. 
Now, I'll draw a little bit of a line. I want to be fair about the situation. Beamer and Rocker have a lot of there, – there's mutual respect there. Like what Beamer has said about Rocker in the past, about, you know, they've worked together. He knows what he's about. It's just, it's, it was a little bit of a different situation, right? It's a little bit of a different situation. Um, there have been conversations, again, like I said, Rocker didn't just up and leave Beamer and, and not tell anybody, you know. But in the grand scheme, to go back to the, the question from Greg, and I appreciate the Danos for sure, the, you know, Rocker is a good coach. Um, he he was not going to be regarded as this great recruiter, like you said, Wes. So uh, I think the key is going to be replacing him with a good, solid coach but a guy who's going to get after recruiting and a guy that meshes well with the staff um, wants to be at South Carolina, like you said, and maybe somebody who, who projects maybe to be around even a little bit longer. And if they can hit that, I think that's a positive. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm going to get back to another super chat here in a second, but I did want to hit this from Travis because, and Travis is one of our loyal listeners, loyal uh, subscribers on Gamecock Central. And I always appreciate his, um, his thoughts on, on things because he he comes at it more, I feel like, from a coach's perspective potentially or former player's perspective. Always have just gotten that vibe from him. Um, and he, he does have a point that uh, the word retread has become like one of the words of the offseason. And we do we do do this, right? Like if if a team you know if a team has a defensive head coach and things don't work out, they they naturally like we got to get an offensive guy, and now everybody's sort of going offensive right now, right? But for example, if uh, if a team has like an older coach, like when Spurrier was leaving, everybody was like, "No, no, no, don't go the don't go the retiring veteran coach route. Go the we always want to go the opposite." So when when Muschamp was hiring his staff, it was SEC guys. Hey, this guy's an SEC guy. This guy was here. This guy was there, and now everybody which rightfully so, I get it. Everybody's like, we don't want these SEC guys. Give us people who want to be here. So th- there is a there is always a middle ground to this. That can, can SEC experience help in some instances? Absolutely. I, I'm not saying that it doesn't. But I will also maintain, Travis, that there is a difference in, you know, being not, – not all coaches are going to be loyal. I understand that. And, and they really they don't have to be because they a lot of them jump all around. But if you are a first year head coach in Shane Beamer, a younger guy, someone that people may um, you you don't want coaches around you that are going to second guess you or are going to think they have all the answers or think that maybe they would do a better job sitting in that chair than you. You want guys, and I'm not saying you want yes men either, but you want people who at least respects you and are loyal to you as a coach. Now, Beamer himself said he's not naive. He's not dumb. If if you have a guy who has, uh, you know, a, he's a position coach and he gets offered play calling duties somewhere else, that that to me is not a question of loyalty. If he takes that job, that's him bettering his family, you know, bettering his situation. You shake his hand. And and you're actually happy for them, and you're glad that your coaches are moving up in the world. Um, but to me, there there's also a difference in sort of just looking for a reason to get out the door when you know when you were when you were going to be kept on. Now, and there's there's nuance to everything. All these situations are slightly different. We right. can't, you know. And Chris, as you said, Rocker Rocker didn't just leave in the middle of the night, as has been put out there. So. You know, he he had been having conversations, so I don't want to paint him to be some bad guy. We we can't praise Justin Step for coming home, you know, and then tell well well Rocker's not allowed to go back to Auburn where he played. You know, that's to me that that that's not necessarily fair. But is there sort of a an issue I think where you if you're Beamer you may maybe need to put an extra emphasis on guys that want to be here, I say yes. Yeah, I mean, staff stability can certainly help. Um, It's not always necessary. I mean, like you look at extreme example. I mean, Nick Saban typically has 
good bit of coaching turnover. Different situation than South Carolina, you know, uh, for obvious reasons. And so when you're trying to build, if you do hire a good staff, it's important to be able to keep a good staff. If, Like you said, man, if you got a guy that steps up from, say, position coach to defensive coordinator and gets that opportunity or a coordinator to head coach, that's great. What you don't want is guys leaving for lateral moves, guys leaving just because they're getting a raise somewhere, guys leaving because they don't mesh with the staff. I mean, those are the issues you don't want. And so sometimes, not all the, not all cases by any means, but there can be situations where you're looking, oh, so-and-so left. Well, okay, but who are you getting to replace him? What were the circumstances? And could you turn out better for it? Um, now, if you have guys leave and there's a lot of belly aching over a certain guy leaving or whatever it may be, uh, you know, I understand that. That's going to happen all the time. But I think the key is how you come out of it. And, um, you know, certainly staff stability can be quite important in the early stages of building a program and then as you continue building keeping those coaches and when you do have a guy or two leave along the way just being able to replace them and, and keep that continuity and keep a good staff together chris um blake has now paid for a haircut for you um appreciate that he does appreciate that and he wants to know which of these transfers or potential transfers can start from day one well i mean i think if you're south carolina you hope all of them but, you know, you, you look, man, I would say right off the bat, the guy that just pops in my head as being almost a sure yes for me would be Amarion Brown. I mean, what, what I've seen from him, what I've heard of, so, as far as the plan for him, how I think he fits into the offense, so even though we don't necessarily know what the offense is going to be yet, he's the guy I would circle. Now, I, I really like the Debo Williams pickup. I think that's like a low-key, really smart, resourceful pickup. So I could see this kid being a steal. Now, to just expect – I don't want to put those expectations on him. He's still a freshman. You know, we got to – we, we can't forget that because he's a transfer, you know, we can't forget the fact that he's also still an inexperienced college player. You look at Amari and Brown, this guy's played a couple of years and played it at – you know, in the ACC, had a really good freshman year. So – He's played against teams like he's going to see um, for the most part, uh, you know, here here in the SEC, whereas some of these other kids, there's going to be a transition. There's going to be a step up. Now, um, you know, you look at Jason Brown, since you said potential transfers, we don't know if that's happening yet or not. If you're South Carolina, you certainly hope that um, he can at least come in and provide some competition and, and you know, you and at the very least be a backup type and, and push Luke Doty and, and uh, compete for that starting job and, and you know, see, see where that goes. And we'll see. I, I think um, if they are able to get Jordan Strong, then you can always use pass rushers. At the very least, I think he's a third down starter, you know, like in, in sort of a, a NASCAR type package or rabbits package or whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, Chris, to me, you're not getting trans – you're not picking transfers to come in and just sit the bench. If, if they're going after these guys – they at least think that they're going to be able to help the team. Um, so, Chris, I'm going to leave that one with you. We still got Tori and Gray to talk about and some Gunner Stockton to talk about. But I'm going to have to hop off here for a second again. And uh, you, I may just need you to finish this out, man. <laughs> yeah, sounds good, man. Gray and Stockton, I'll make a note of it. Anything else you guys want to talk about? So, uh, first of all, Blake, my hair is not as – it's actually better than it normally is. I'm not saying it's good, but this is – this for me is actually pretty decent. So um, I guess I'll expect a tip on days that it's way worse too. But, yeah, I, I would agree with uh, what Wes is saying. Now, uh, the Jenkins kid, you know, would certainly be one given South Carolina's need at receiver, the St. Francis wide receiver. I totally agree that, you know, you're, you're bringing in guys for two reasons. One, you've got a starting hole like Amari and Brown, he's someone that I think has a good chance to come in and start, or critical depth. So Jason Brown would be a critical depth guy, probably at least a guy like David Spalding at defensive back. There's lots of holes. He could be a starter. I think Debo Williams at linebacker is going to have a chance to start. You know, I think he will have a chance because you look there, you get Damani Staley back, you get Sherrod Green back, you got Cobb on the roster who's played a little bit last year. Uh, but I think there are still some questions there, and Debo Williams is, is a really 
really quality player. Um, so definitely, hey, appreciate the tip once again. I will get a haircut soon, I promise, at some point. I'm so busy, I don't know when it will be. But I will use your tip money to do that. So thank you for that. Uh, oh, I saw, I, don't, I can't find it, but Shullen mentioned, uh, let's see, he mentioned Brad Lawing at Georgia State. Lawing is actually not at Georgia State anymore. He's retired. I know he, he's going to come up from now until – the end of time anytime there's a d-line coaching uh, vacancy at south carolina I, I would not anticipate that happening with law and he's out of the game i'm not sure that he's looking to get back in or anything like that right now and hey shout out to kyle foster ten dollar tip really appreciate that man very much your support of the show you guys have been very generous with the tips today and we very much appreciate that uh Get your questions in, guys. Uh, we got a couple more things to hit, at least a few more. Uh, I want to go through Wes's list that he gave us at the beginning. Tory and Gray is one. Uh, that happened earlier this week. Defensive backs coach most recently at Florida. Has NFL experience with Washington uh, not too long ago and also has experience at Virginia Tech. Played for Virginia Tech and coached there with Shane Beamer when Beamer was there under Frank Beamer, his father. And uh, regarded as a good teacher, I think he's going to give South Carolina some recruiting juice there um, in the state of Florida. We actually had an update on the site recently uh, with several guys, you know, out of the state of Florida that you can watch out for. Gamecock Russ, your guy, Sam McCall, four-star defensive back out of Lakeland, Florida, one of the top prospects in the country. He's certainly, I think, going to be one to watch uh, when it comes to Torian Gray. He was committed to Florida. When Torian was there, he decommitted when Torian left Florida. And now, does that mean that automatically Sam McCall is going to be coming to South Carolina? I, I don't know that. But I do think it's a reasonable expectation that uh, he's going to have them in the mix with Sam McCall and some other guys as well. So uh, I think that's a, a good hire for them. Don't know. Here's one thing we don't quite know yet. Is Torian Gray definitely just coaching corners? Is he just coaching safeties? Clayton White is a defensive backs coach by trade. He's mentioned he could coach linebackers. The expectation has sort of been that Mike Peterson would coach linebackers. Torian Gray and Clayton White, the defensive coordinator, would split the secondary, and then you have someone handle the defensive line. But we haven't 100% confirmed that yet. Um, that's sort of been an expectation, but again, not confirmed. They wanted to have the staff fully situated, and then go from there. So obviously they need to hire another defensive line coach now and go from there. Byron Gerardo, speaking of defensive line, here's a really cool story, man. <laughs> Excuse me. So Byron Gerardo was in the 2010 class for South Carolina, right? Um, he's a Walter Burrow native. He was at Fort Scott Community College in Kansas. He was a two-star recruit. He didn't have a great deal of traction on the, re on the recruiting front. And I remember talking to one of his coaches out at Fort Scott at the time, and he said, guys, he said, Byron Gerardo would give a body part <laughs> to be able to go to South Carolina and play. And eventually – you know, South Carolina got wind of Byron Gerardo. Shane Beamer actually was very important in recruiting him. He had that recruiting area and some junior college areas as, as uh, a Gamecock staffer. Ended up getting in on Byron, helped recruit him to South Carolina. Still listed on his Rivals.com profile as his, uh, as his lead recruiter. And Byron obviously played very well for South Carolina. Um, was on some really, really good teams at South Carolina and then ended up getting into the strength and conditioning world. He was at South Carolina, moved over to Tennessee, and is now back home as an assistant under Luke Day, strength and conditioning. So strength and conditioning uh, workouts getting going next week, winter workouts. So that'll be very, very interesting to track as well. Um, the other thing we got to mention, Gunnar Stockton. There's so much going on that I don't want to say it's buried, but maybe people have already forgotten about Gunnar Stockton. Uh, decommitted from South Carolina. Chad Simmons from Rivals.com had a lot of really good information 
Um, it's up on our website right now as well. If you want to check it out, I've got an insider report with a little more on Stockton. The key question everybody has is what, where's he going to go? Can South Carolina get back in on him? And um, the, the, it doesn't look as promising for South Carolina right now. Um, just because, look, there's a lot, as Gunnar said in his decommitment statement, a lot has changed. He really liked Will Muschamp. Obviously, the Mike Bobo connection is obvious. He's, he's got the connection with Connor Shaw, yes, but the Mike Bobo connection is obvious there too. And so the comfort level, particularly with, with him not being able to visit anywhere, him not being able to come back to Columbia in a while, and I think the last time he was in Columbia was for the A&M game, which didn't go too well. You know, they – the comfort level there has just, I would say it's been diminished, would be a fair thing to say. And now you got a deal where Georgia's continued recruiting him. Georgia can have certainly a lure for Georgia kids. You've got Auburn in the mix now. They've offered, re offered under Brian Harson, the new head coach. Then you got Bobo there. Um, will South Carolina keep trying? I'm sure. Uh, could they get him back in the fold? I think it will take prolonging the process because there is a thought that just like last time, just like his original commitment, when Gunner, if he comes to a decision and says, this is what feels right, he may just do it. And that could be soon. No hard information on that, but it could be. So we'll see how it plays out. There's some other quarterbacks that we're digging in on. Got an, uh, an update, a little bit of information on Sam Horn out of Georgia this morning from the 2022 class. We'll still keep tracking Stockton for a while. We'll, tr we'll track Sam Horn. And there's some other ones, too, that we're digging around on that we – Hope to be able to bring you some information on uh, very soon. Let me get to Jeffrey, another super chat. Appreciate you, Jeffrey. Any new information about the offensive line coach? So obviously one name that people are going to want to know about is Travell Wharton uh, with Washington in the NFL most recently this season. Also spent some time with the Carolina Panthers as, as, as an offensive line assistant. We don't know um, if who's going to be the guy yet. Uh, Travell, I think, has been in the mix some, um, but I don't, I haven't gotten the sense that he's been the lead guy, uh, maybe, but I think he has been in the mix. I know Beamer, Shane Beamer, has been reaching out to some other uh, candidates along the way, too. So, still unsettled, still waiting to see what happens there. And obviously, they got a D line opening. So, Jeffrey, I wish I could give him more there. We don't quite know yet. We haven't been able to pinpoint, hey, I think it's this guy. Um, I think he's going to be the higher. We just don't know quite yet. So I sort of feel bad. I wasn't able to give you a little bit, uh, a little bit more on that. All right. So let's see. I was going to get to a little bit more of your questions. Oh, here's a good one from Stephen, Stephen Witherspoon. Any word on Shaq Wilson coming home with Byron Gerardo? Shaq Wilson, of course, former Gamecock linebacker. And he also played on some really good teams in Columbia, was also a strength and conditioning assistant with Byron Gerardo at Tennessee. Uh, it is possible. Wes has actually had some reporting on this with Wilson. Uh, last we heard, nothing's been done there. Um, but th it is possible that Wilson could get back to Columbia in some role. And it might not necessarily be a strength role. Um, he's been an analyst type before. Could he do something that's a little bit more football centric as opposed to weight room centric? That is possible. And that is something that we are going to be tracking going forward. J Rock Media, appreciate it, man. $5 tip, super chat. Thank you very much for that. Chris, do you think Joyner will get another look at quarterback with the new staff? Um, I don't know. The early indications, early indications, are, I don't think that's been a move that's been made right now because everything that we've heard just in, in digging all day on this type of stuff is that um, the, the sense is that the room – and Marcus Satterfield even mentioned the quarterbacks the other day. He mentioned uh, Luke Doty, he mentioned um, Colton Gothier, and then he mentioned Connor being Connor Jordan, the walk-on. And those are the only names that I've heard so far even up to this morning. All right, so I don't – if there's plans to move Joiner back, I don't think it's been done yet, you know. And so uh, I would be inclined to say no, but I don't 100% know, right? Ricky Sanders uh, has a little shout out for our guy Clint Hammond here, presenting sponsor here of the show, GC Live Mortgage Network. Just worked with Clint on Refi My Mortgage. It was really easy. 
what he projected, checked out at closing. Really happy. Ricky, glad to hear that you had a great experience with Clint. A lot of people have. So thanks for saying that. Thanks for watching the show. And thanks for Clint of Mortgage Network being our primary sponsor. So one more super chat here, guys, before we close it out. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. Got a bunch of uh, phone calls that we got to catch up on. Try to get some more scoop, run down some more stuff for you guys. Greg S., the $5 super chat. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate you. Can you give us all you got on potential D-line coach Jimmy Lindsay? If you haven't heard that name, you're not reading GamecockCentral.com. You should be. Guys, go hit us up. Promo code Gamecocks. Get 50% off your first year of membership by going to GamecockCentral.com. Thank you, Greg, for your super chat. Uh, Jimmy Lindsay, uh, he was a defensive line coach for three seasons uh, with Clayton White, Gamecocks defensive coordinator. So uh, the first year he was he coached the whole D-line, I think, and then the next two seasons he coached the defensive ends and was the recruiting coordinator um, and did a nice job there. From my understanding, he's got some recruiting ties in Georgia. He is a Sherrall native. I think he grew up right over the line, but he was either born in Sherrall or sort of is considered a Sherrall native. So it would be a homecoming of sorts in that regard. Um, and then he also coached last season at Illinois um, for Lovey Smith. He coached the defensive ends there, so he moved up to the Big Ten. Obviously, there was a staff change over there, so no longer on staff there. And the other thing is, uh, you know, he has a he has a tie with Marcus Satterfield. Satterfield um, had a couple of seasons or a few seasons at Chattanooga, and that's actually Jimmy Lindsay's alma mater. And he had a couple years of staff carry over there with Satterfield. So. There are some ties to some Gamecock staffers there, uh, multiple Gamecock staffers, even beyond those two with Jimmy Lindsay, uh, regarded as a good recruiter. And he's done a good job, you know, in um, also developing some guys on that roster as well. Greg says, appreciate all your hard work, much respect and gratitude. Right back at you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate all you guys and girls for jumping in the chat today. Very active show tons of talk about and I almost hate to cut it uh, not short we've had a pretty full show but um we are going to go ahead and cut it now because as i said a few minutes ago tons of calls to make lots of texts lots of emails and some writing to do got to keep uh, running down some information for you guys so we can keep answering these questions so the plan right now we'll be back on friday as was said monday wednesday friday okay uh, we might have to, just to give you a heads up, at some point, we might have to look at moving the show time. We do want to get it sort of regular. But right now, off-season, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we may have to think about moving some show slots. All right, so just keep that in mind, and, and we'll talk through all that with you guys as well. Uh, thanks again so much for watching the show, GC Live here. Make sure you check out GamecockCentral.com. Come join us. Be a subscriber. That way, when we end the show, you want to hop right on Gamecock Central and come ask me some more questions, interact with our community, our staff. Please come and do that. Thank you so much to Clint Hammond from Mortgage Network for sponsoring the show. Until next time, I'm Chris Clark. He was Wes, and we'll see you next time.